This presentation gives an introduction to map projections. It describes different types of map projections, discusses the aspect of mapping accuracy, and examines some cylindrical projections in more detail. This is the first of three RLOs developed on map projections, two related RLOs that describe conical and azimuthal projections in more detail are also available. A map projection is a way to represent the curved surface of the Earth on the flat surface of a map. We start with a brief review of coordinate systems and models for the shape of the Earth. A more detailed description of these reviewed concepts can be found in a separate RLO module on coordinate systems. The first step for mapping spatial features of the Earth's surface is to select a mathematical model that approximates the shape and size of the Earth. The simplest model is a sphere. A better approximation of the Earth is through an ellipsoid, also called a spheroid, which is an ellipse rotated about its minor axis. In both models, a point position on the Earth's surface can be unambiguously specified through geographic coordinates with parameters latitude and longitude. Both are angular measurements. Latitude, usually denoted by the Greek letter phi, gives the location of a place on the Earth's surface north or south of the equator. It ranges from 0 degrees at the equator to 90 degrees at the poles. Longitude, denoted by the Greek letter lambda, measures the angle east or west from the prime meridian that goes through Greenwich, England. Geographic coordinates based on a spheroid are known as geodetic coordinates. For this presentation, we will use the more generic term geographic coordinates. The reference system that geographic coordinates are based on uses imaginary arcs on the Earth's surface called meridians and parallels. Meridians are running in north-south direction between the poles. They form ellipses on the ellipsoid. Parallels are running east-west at a constant distance from the equator. They form circles on the surface of the ellipsoid. Meridians and parallels intersect at right angles. Because of the convergence of meridians at poles, parallels become smaller the farther they are from the equator. A map projection transforms the spherical Earth's surface to a two-dimensional map plane. It uses mathematical formulas to relate geographical coordinates to flat planar coordinates. The surface onto which the ellipsoid, or sphere, is projected must be one that can unfold itself into a plane without distortion. Such a surface is called a developable surface, which can either be a cone, a cylinder, or a flat plane. Correspondingly, projection families can be grouped into conic, cylindrical, and azimuthal. This presentation focuses on the family of cylindrical projections. To illustrate how to construct a map projection, one can use a reduced model of the Earth, such as a globe, and a geometric object, such as a cylinder. By placing the cylinder tangent to a lighted globe, one can draw a projection by tracing the lines of latitude and longitude onto the cylinder. Once the cylinder is cut along a meridian, this results in the projected position of the selected meridians and parallels. This pattern is called a graticule and shown in the right figure. In this example, the cylinder is the developable surface, and the globe, which is to be mapped, is called the reference surface or reference globe. Another key feature of a map is the orientation of the developable surface relative to the sphere, which is also called the aspect of a map projection. In normal or equatorial aspect, as shown here for the cylindrical projection, the main orientation of the projection surface is parallel to the Earth's axis. 
Another distinction is the so-called case of the projection, which describes whether the developable surface is tangent to the globe or intersects it. The resulting lines of tangency or intersection are called standard parallels or standard meridians, or more general, standard lines. The tangent case shown to the left results in one standard line, and the secant case to the right results in two standard lines. Standard lines have no distortion from the projection process. Further, in the transverse aspect, the cylinder is horizontally oriented, whereas with the oblique aspect, the cylinder is oriented neither horizontally nor vertically. When creating a map projection, the first step is to map the Earth onto a globe that is reduced to the scale of the flat map. The nominal scale of the map can then be computed as ratio of the globe radius to the Earth radius and expressed as a representative fraction. This ratio is also called the principal scale. In a second step, the globe surface is mathematically transformed point by point onto a flat surface. On the reference globe, the actual scale anywhere will be the same as the principal scale, whereas on the flat map, the actual scale will be different from the principal scale at various places due to map distortions. To describe these local variations in map scale, the concept of scale factor has been introduced. It is the ratio of the local scale to the principal scale. The scale factor will be exactly one everywhere on the globe, but vary from place to place on a flat map. The scale factor is one along standard lines in plane maps. While data sets based on geographic coordinates can be readily used in a geographic information system, Map projections provide several advantages. First, a map projection allows us to use a two-dimensional map, either paper or digital, instead of a globe. Second, it allows us to use plane coordinates rather than latitude and longitude values, which significantly simplifies geometric computations such as distances or areas between given points on Earth. However, when the spherical surface is transformed to a plane, not all geometrical relationships on the sphere can be retained. This illustration provides some examples for geometrical relationships that get distorted within the projection process, such as the 90 degree angle between parallels and meridians as shown in the map to the lower right. The major alterations have to do with angles, areas, distances, and directions. Map projections can therefore also be grouped by the preserved property. The four properties which will be explained in the next slides are conformal, equal area, equidistant, and as immutal. The conformal and equal area properties are called major properties and are mutually exclusive. Otherwise, a map projection can have more than one preserved property. The equidistant and azimuthal properties are local properties and may be true only for selected lines of the map projection. A projection is conformal if at any particular point the scale is the same in all directions. Conformal map projections preserve local angles and shapes, but as the region becomes larger, they show considerable area distortions. A necessary but not sufficient condition is that meridians and parallels intersect at right angles. An example is the Mercator projection, which is a cylindrical map projection with a conformal property. Although shapes are represented correctly on local regions, the area distortions are significant towards the polar regions. For example, Greenland appears to be larger in the map but is only one-eighth the size of South America on the globe. As demonstrated here, shapes and correct relative sizes cannot be retained at the same time. 
an equal area projection, which is also known as equivalent or italic, preserves the relative size of areas. In other words, given any two regions, A and B on the globe, the ratio of size A to size B is retained in the map. An example for this is the sinusoidal projection. Whereas shape distortions increase toward the pole, the relative sizes of areas is shown correctly as illustrated for South America and Greenland here. An equidistant projection has a well-defined non-trivial set of standard lines along which scale is maintained correctly. In the equidistant cylindrical map, which is shown in the normal case in this figure, the equator is the standard parallel. On a globe, the equator is twice as long as a meridian. This 2 to 1 ratio is also retained in this map, which means that both the equator and the meridians are equidistant lines with a scale factor of 1. For all other lines, however, scale varies significantly from the principal scale. Take, for example, the polar regions. The map visualizes north and south pole to be as long as the equator, although on the globe, the poles are points and therefore have length zero. The shortest connection between two points on a globe is along a great circle. The so-called azimuth describes the clockwise angle between north direction and the direction to another point measured along the minimum distance lines from an observer's reference point. In the left figure, point B lies north of a reference point A on the sphere. The azimuth alpha of great circle arc A to C is therefore the angle between the great circle arcs A to B and A to C. On an azimuthal projection centered on A, all great circle arcs through corresponding point A are straight lines and all azimuths from A are preserved. All azimuthal projections preserve the azimuth from a reference point, thus presenting true direction but not necessarily distance to any other points. Now let's have a look at general distortion patterns of cylindrical projections. This figure shows a cylindrical projection in normal orientation for the tangent and secant case, resulting in one standard line and two standard lines respectively. The color bands illustrate that the lines of equal distortion are lines parallel to the standard lines and that distortion increases away from the standard lines. Maximum distortion is smaller for the secant case. A similar distortion pattern can be observed for the transverse and oblique orientation of a cylinder. Another common method to visualize map distortions is the Tissot Indicatrix. It does so by showing what a small circle on the globe would look like on the map. A single indicatrix describes the distortion at a single point whereas many Tissot indicatrices placed across a map illustrate the spatial change in distortion. On the reference globe, a Tissot indicatrix is a circle of equal size at each location, as shown in the upper figure. In conformal maps, where angles and shapes are preserved at each point, the Tissot's indicatrices are all circles of size varying by location, as shown in the lower figure for the Mercator projection. The further away a location is from a standard line, in this case the equator, the stronger is the distortion. In equal area projections, the Tissot's indicatrices all have the same area, though their shapes and orientations vary with location. An example is shown here for the sinusoidal projection. In arbitrary projections other than conformal and equal area, both area and shape vary across the map. 
A distinction is made between true cylindrical projections, usually just called cylindrical projections and pseudo-cylindrical projections. The first type of projection refers to any projection for which in the normal equatorial aspect meridians are mapped to equally spaced vertical lines, with parallels mapped to horizontal lines. As opposed to this, pseudo-cylindrical projections represent only the central meridian and each parallel as a single straight line segment, but not the other meridians. Although there are hundreds of maps in use and many different map projections are available in a geographic information system, each map serves a different purpose and each projection has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. Some maps are more appropriate for mapping the whole world, and some others for mapping local regions. The table lists some prominent cylindrical projections, the sinusoidal and mercator projection which are commonly used to map the world were already briefly introduced. In the next slides, we present some details about the transverse mercator projection. The bottom of the table lists two so-called compromise projections. These projections are neither conformal nor equal area, but seek instead to strike a balance between distortions. The Miller cylindrical and the Robinson projection are prominent examples of this projection type. Projected coordinate systems are built on map projections and provide a convenient way to describe a point location in rectangular coordinates. Both the Universal Transverse Mercator Grid System and the State Plane Coordinate System are commonly used coordinate systems on maps in the U.S. In the UTM Grid System, the area between 84 degrees north and 80 degrees south employs a series of 60 zones covering the whole world. Each zone uses the transverse Mercator projection. Zones are numbered from 1 to 60 from west to east, with each zone 6 degrees wide in longitude. The division of the mapped area into 60 zones warrants an overall mapping accuracy of one part in 2500. The state plane coordinate system was developed in the 1930s to permanently record original land survey monument locations in the United States. To maintain the required accuracy of one part in 10,000 or less, a state may have one or more zones. Each zone has its own projection and coordinate grid system. In the figure, thinner lines denote county boundaries whereas thick dark lines show zone boundaries. Zones that are long in the north-south direction use the transverse Mercator projection, while zones extended in east-west direction use the Lambert conformal conic projection. Florida has three zones, two of which have a north-south extent and therefore use the transverse Mercator projection while the transverse Mercator projection is used both in the UTM and state plane coordinate system, the location of zones differs between both systems, as can be seen by comparing this and the previous figure. The transverse Mercator projection uses a cylinder that is horizontally oriented. UTM applies the cylinder in secant case so that the cylinder intersects the ellipsoid along two small circles parallel to the central meridian. Scale is constant north-south along the meridians and varies east-west along the parallels. In the map grid below, the cross section shown to the right, the two small circles appear as straight lines B and D, which are placed 180 kilometers east and west of the central meridian when measured at the equator. These two lines have a scale factor of 1. A distance of 100 meters on the ellipsoid would therefore be read as 100 meters along lines B or D on the map. 
Line C represents the projected central meridian. Along the center line of each UTM grid zone, the scale factor is 0 0.9996. This means that the local scale along the map's center is smaller than the nominal scale and that distances in the map are contracted compared to measurements on the ellipsoid. A distance of 100 meters on the ellipsoid would be read as 99.96 meters on the map. At the zone boundaries, which are about 360 kilometers from the center grid line at the equator, the scale factor is 1.00158. The use of one projection per UTM zone results in an overall accuracy of one part in 2500. As can be seen in the right figure, meridians and parallels in the graticule appear in the map as curved lines which intersect at 90 degrees. The graticule is a different set of curves than the map grid. The latter is used to read the east and north coordinates of a point in the map. Also, for most zones of the state plane coordinate system, the transverse mercator projection is used in secant case. Thus, the imaginary cylinder cuts the spheroid along two small circles at a certain distance from the central meridian. Due to the smaller zone sizes, scale distortions are generally smaller in the state plane coordinate system than in the UTM grid system. For example, the two state plane zones in Florida that use the transverse Mercator projection have a mapping accuracy of 1 in 17,000 along their meridians. Both UTM and state plane coordinates can be directly read from topographic maps using superimposed grid lines and tick marks. Here we show coordinate readings using a geographic information system beginning with UTM coordinates. The background image visualizes part of the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. The superimposed grid lines provide reference for east and north coordinate values in meters. As an example, take the northwest corner of the administration building. Its UTM coordinates can be read as 576,000 136 meters east and 2,885,270 meters north in UTM Zone 17. Now the same image is overlaid with the state plane coordinate grid showing east and north references in U.S. feet. The same building corner reads now as 906,000 41 feet east and 637,154 feet north for the Florida East State Plain Zone. We conclude this presentation with a list of further online resources on map projections.